Introducing the Good and Basic Hackle. A hackle is another tool that is used in the production of wool. It's also used in the production of flax. Now, what it is is a block with a bunch of spikes sticking out of it that you can use to comb and prepare fiber. Rather than being held in the hand, a hackle is bolted down to a secure surface, either with clamps or with bolts that can go through holes like these. This hackle is designed to be mounted on the side of a table, either with bolts or with regular clamps. Simply hold it on the edge of a table like this, and you're in a position to begin combing with combs like we saw in a previous video. Preparing the fiber again at 90 degree angles, placing it down onto the hackle like this, and then removing it from the hackle at this angle, like so. But that's not really what I want to talk about here. The thing I want to talk about is the design process that went into this hackle, because this is an absurdly simple piece of kit, but it was surprisingly frustrating to put together. This is roughly speaking the sequence of wool combs that got us to this version which finally worked. Now, the constraint that I have is that this thing needs to fit on a 3D printer, and a 3D printer has layer lines. If you look very closely at one of these parts, you can see that there are very thin lines that look a little bit like wood grain. Now, I could print this in a vertical formation, but then all the grain would be running this way. And if you put nails in, it would split, and that wouldn't be good for anybody. So this thing really does need to be printed this way with the holes going up vertically. Now, the other problem with a 3D printer is that it has a defined size. My 3D printer is actually too small to print this flat. I have to shove it at the widest angle that I can possibly get. My initial version here was too small really to be useful for anything. It's really just a fixed wool comb on the side of the table. And for a, a good hackle, you want a little bit of width in it. So I finally found the very widest that I could possibly make on my 3D printer by putting it at the most extreme angle I could. Going corner to corner, this is as big as I can make it. And now we're out of the woods. We have the whole size figured out, we have the hackle at the appropriate size, and we have additional problems. I initially tried putting my logo on here, but because of the size of the nozzle I was using, the resolution just wouldn't pick up the logo. So I replaced it with a hole. We now have a hole there. Okay, that's even more useful. I can use that to put a bolt through. And now we're out of the woods. I simply put the nails in through here and we're ready to go. Except we have an additional problem. Right here you can see two additional problems. One of them is that the nail heads add a little bit of width. And that means that clamping this down to the table is a bit of a challenge because it rocks and that's not good for anybody. The other problem we ran into is when I put the nails into this one, you can see that I broke off one of these little ears. And so that thin spot right there is a weak point. Granted, it is possible to put the nails in without breaking it if you're very precise and patient, but let's prepare for the worst and make a more robust product. The reason why I've designed the nails to be on this side going through is because the print has to have a bottom, a bottom that rests against the print surface and goes upward. And if I want to have these little ears like so, they would be very difficult to print in this orientation because you would be squirting out liquid plastic into thin air over here. You can fix that by adding supports, but supports are ugly and difficult to remove, so I didn't want to do that. Enter the solution. In this case, this is the bottom of the print. It prints up like this, the layer lines are such that the holes will still be strong, and that is perfect. But now we have a recessed portion here, and no thinner area for the, those ears that are going to clamp it to the table. And now, the nails go in from this side. That recess is just the right size to support those nail heads and make a nice, flat, stable surface. The recess is just the right size to hide those nail heads more or less flush with this side of the plastic. And now, because there's no ear, there's no thin spot here that's easy to break. This is a better product. It's easier to 3D print and better design. You can find this again on Thingiverse and also on my Etsy shop. The price is exactly the same as the wool combs. You can purchase it with the nails for 25 or without the nails for 17 
I hope you enjoyed this video and a little bit of insight into the design process for 3D printing. It has been remarkably satisfying to be able to come up with an idea, print it, find out why it doesn't work, and then print another one in the same day. Being able to go from design to prototype to design to prototype repeatedly is liberating, especially at the home scale where I'm working. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe below. And if you'd like to check out these wool combs, I'll have links in the description below for both the Thingiverse and Etsy accounts.